the rematch game, including last year, 54 to 20. And the Banjo Bowl begins with a short kick here. That'll be taken at the 35. Return right back up the middle. Pretty good return by a big man out to the 54-yard line. De Beer gets the job done. First return of his career. And a look at Dolagala. Well, last week, he went 22 of 39, 326 yards passing did not throw a touchdown but in his two starts the two wins last week versus Winnipeg week before versus BC zero interceptions protecting the ball nicely different animal today against the Bombers defense in this crowd at IG field 33,500 for the sellout they'll hand it off and immediately wrapped up Kyrie Wilson all over Jamal Morrow Morrow, a big part of this rider offense. Couple of changes up front for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on offense. Logan Bandy will play for Evan Johnson at guard. Brandon Council goes in for Colin Kelly at right tackle. And they use Jamal Morrow on the Labor Day weekend win out of the backfield, throwing him the football successfully. More receiving yards and rushing yards for Morrow. Last weekend, Dola Gala pressured, hit in the head, jumps ahead. There's a flag at the play as he's wrapped down by Big Hill, but it looked like he did take a hand up in the face along the way. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's exactly what the call will be. Not sure the number. Ricky Walker looks like he is the guilty party. Major foul, roughing the passer, contact to the head. Winnipeg number nine, 15-yard penalty from the previous line of scrimmage and a first down. You have to really get up there for Walker, although he's not a small guy either, but at six foot seven. Saw the contact to the face mask and the head. Walker knew it immediately. Winnipeg leads the league with the fewest defensive penalties taken so far this season. A big one there. And now a completion first of the day for Dola Gala as he gets it to Kean Schaefer Baker against this Winnipeg defense. Well, I, I actually highlighted Ricky Walker. I think he is one of the unsung heroes of this defense, playing very well throughout the last four or five weeks. The interior of that D-line. See how Logan Vandy holds up there. Adam Big Hill. Great conversation with him about what happened on Labor Day. We'll talk more about that as the game goes on. And another underrated player in that secondary, Evan Holm. I think he's having an all-star year. Second and three. They'll get it out into the flat. Back to Schaefer Baker again. Bounces off one tackle. Has a first down. And a little bit more along the near sideline. He only had one catch last week. He's got two already here today. Interesting that the Bombers in this won the toss in this Banjo Bowl and elected to defer to the second half. No real weather or wind involved with that decision. They wanted to put their defense on the field first. That return to midfield got Jake Dolagala good field position in drive number one, and now he's in scoring range. And that penalty, of course, keeping the drive alive as well. May have been looking at a two and out. First and 10 from the Winnipeg 21. Back on the ground tomorrow, nowhere to go. Takes it down to the 20, a short pickup on first down carry for Jamal Morrow. I think what has been very impressive from Jake Dolagala is two things. One, his poise and his ability to push the football, go through his progressions while still protecting it. Sometimes there's a fine line there. Second and eight for Dola Gala. Looks to his right. Nobody there. Now he goes over the middle to the end zone. Misses him. Looking for Schaefer Baker. Threw it behind him. Would have been a touchdown. Instead, it's an incompletion. Let's take a look at how Jake Dola Gala, again, this is start number four for him. Keep that in mind as he's looking out, going through his progressions. Looks wide to the wide side. Comes all the way back to the crosser and just a little bit behind Schaefer Baker, or that's his first touchdown throw of the Banjo Bowl. Remember, Jake Dola Gala played last year in the Banjo Bowl when everybody got sick and he had to drive all the way to Winnipeg on game day. That's right. <laughs> And Lother, who had five field goals on Sunday, knocks one through. The Riders are on the board. They lead 3-0. Zach Kolaris about to be on the field for the first time today when we return to a sold-out IG field. The Banjo Bowl. 
Yeah, I mentioned that Zach Kolaris won both as a starter for Saskatchewan and twice as a starter for Winnipeg in this game. And I can tell you from experience, this is the toughest game for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the regular season, no matter what the records and no matter what happened last week. It just is. I mean, this is the type of game sometimes in your journey as a player or coach, you have to make every single opportunity happen. First touch of the game for Brady Oliveira goes for about eight yards. What I mean by that is you're going to get chances for big plays, but if you don't make them in this game, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will start to roll, and, and he has not lost back-to-back -back games as a starter for this football team. And he certainly doesn't want to start that now. Four touchdown passes last year. Winnipeg scored on the first eight possessions of that ball game. Hukop into the game here, short yardage. Job's done, picks up the first down for Winnipeg. Up front for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Patrick Neufeld and Jeff Gray have got their hands full with Micah Johnson, who is, who is having an underrated quiet year, but an all-star year on defense. More on that in a second, and Nick Dembski Labor Day weekend with a season high in yards from scrimmage. Johnson, three-time All-Star already in his career. Four sacks this season. Handful of tackles for a loss as well. First and ten Winnipeg on their own 51. Kolaris takes the handoff. Has a completion. Brady Oliveira. That'll be a first down as they get Brady involved in the air attack. Boy, Oliveira really understands and has a nose for that first down marker he knows exactly where it is on every play and he, j he knows he needs to keep his balance and get that extra step or two and then dive and he gets it by half a yard knew exactly where it was Winnipeg marching down to the rider 49 four options wide right for Kolaris fakes it takes off on his own Kolaris has a first down as he slides inside the 40 he doesn't do it very often but he picks one up right there I think when he sees that he's got four receivers out there in the way that the riders have rotated to those four receivers he just sees a natural escape lane off the backside and goes ahead you're right doesn't do it often but he did hook slide nice and early to make sure there was no second guessing and that you got to be careful with if you're a rider From the Saskatchewan 38, Kolaris, another completion down to the 30 as Winnipeg executing the offense brilliantly so far. A connection there to Kenny Lawler for the first time today. Kenny Lawler just a couple of catches in the Labor Day weekend, but he had the big overtime touchdown after the Riders had gone up by eight in the first overtime period. Zach Kolaris in his turn, first play right down the field to Kenny Lawler did not get the two point convert and that's the difference on Labor Day Lawler with 186 yards in his last four games but three touchdowns over that stretch here's Oliveira that'll put him over a thousand yards on the year as he takes it all the way down to the red zone for the Bombers yeah good for Brady Oliveira getting over that thousand yard mark this quickly flag right at the end of this play as well He was just under 100 yards on Labor Day the weekend, 88 yards. But as a team, the Bombers rushed for over 100. See what the penalty is. Secondary discussion here. The officials had already huddled. It's against the Riders. Andre Pru calling the shots today. Interesting how Andre Pru is discussing this. Yeah. But all the players know exactly what's going on. <laughs> they just moved it themselves. The ball has been placed just inside the 10 yard line, despite this conversation continuing. Nice start for Winnipeg. So far, pretty patient drive. No big chunks, but just steadily eight. 
eight yards and nine yards and methodically picking their way down the football field. And, and balance with Brady Oliveira. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. Saskatchewan number 91. From the 20 yard line, we're gonna go off the distance and a first down. Anthony Lanier getting called here. Yeah, you're gonna see in the middle here, Anthony Lanier gets twisted and tied up. Now he's to the right of your screen right here and he rips the helmet. And then with the helmet on the ground, he gets up and then throws the helmet away. They'll get it back to Brady Oliveira. A couple of yards. He was working on the extra offensive lineman, Liam Dobson, there. Oliveira, three carries already in this game for 20 yards, 10 yards in the air as well. Short pickup there, second and goal from the rider, eight. Winnipeg, six and two against the West. So far this season, five and one at home. Kolaris looking to finish off a drive here. Second and goal from the Saskatchewan eight. Three options out to his left. Looks to the right, throws to the right, has a man! Jones stops! Trying to push through to the end zone, but the Riders are there to deny him. Okay, so you're, you're the Winnipeg Blue Bombers right now. You have Brady Oliveira. As your start, our starting tailback who just went over a thousand yards, your third down. But you only need about a yard, maybe two. They're putting in short yardage. Prukop into the game. He had a couple of touchdowns in the Banjo Bowl last year. The length of the football more than a yard. We'll look to try to get Winnipeg on the board. Huge push here early. Prukop's in. Finishes the job and Winnipeg goes on top for the first time today at home. Sell out on Labor Day on the weekend on Sunday in Saskatchewan. Sell out here in Winnipeg. The tailgating's been going on all morning long the parking lots jam-packed around this stadium driving in and they're into it after that methodical first drive by Zach Kolaris Castillo for an early four-point cushion and he knocks it home Winnipeg responds after the Riders went up three nothing Kolaris Brady Oliveira on a drive finished by Dakota Prukop. Went to work on a nine play drive that went 70 yards and ended in a major and took off and ran one play. Good balance between the run game and throwing the football. Got right down to the doorstep with Dalton Schoen and then finished it with Dakota Prukop. Fifth touchdown of the season for Prukop. And this one will be kicked away. Faru Alford gets underneath it at the 21, back to the 30, patiently trying to find some space. There's a flag on the play as Alford brings it all the way back out, just shy of the 50. We will sort out that flag when we return to a sold-out IG field on a beautiful day in Winnipeg. Up with an excellent performance last week. 326 yards, completing 22 passes, and... Looking calm and cool the entire way. Yeah, against the great defense. High pressure situation. That was the two-point convert. Great poise and composure in start number three at that time. This is start number four. This drive starts just outside the 20. They will give it to Morrow, and Morrow picks up about three or four yards on that first down carry. Now, when we talked to Craig Dickinson this week, he made an interesting point. He said, got to take on different types of challenges and Jake Dolagala has done a great job did against the BC Lions a home game and then against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers another home game now he's on the road on the banjo bowl dealing with this crowd 
Different type of atmosphere for sure. Second and seven. Big Hill will bring some pressure. Near side has a completion. Great tackle by Holm to make sure that Jareth Stearns couldn't turn the corner and pick up a first down. Yeah, I highlighted Holm in the in the starting lineups for a reason. I, I just think he is having an outstanding season. I mean, he had a great training camp. The teammates were raving about it. Adam Big Hill leads this defense in tackles, but Evan Holm is second on the team. 46 defensive tackles. That's number two on the team, and he's added 10 knockdowns. He's getting around the football. He's having an all-star year. No one's really talking about him. Had a sack last week. Jamal Parker. Waits back on his own 30. Adam Korsak averaging just under 48 yards per punt. Let's this one fly. A little bit of a low kick. Parker takes it at the 33. Near sideline. Has a little bit of space all the way back out to the 51 before he is pushed out of bounds. Interesting week for Zach Kolaris, no doubt about it. After the Pete Robertson incident in the Labor Day game. We'll have more on that. Ability for his actions, not just to Kolaris and the league. Uh, earlier this week at Riders Day 1 practice, Robertson addressed his teammates and apologized for putting them in a difficult situation last weekend and making himself unavailable for the Banjo Bowl. And head coach Craig Dickinson confirmed that the club has disciplined Robertson internally as well. Guys? So now we move on, Glenn? Yeah, I, th I think we can move on. I mean, look at this. Brady whoa, Oliveira, whoa. a big one all the way down to the 30. Broke a few tackles, and they finally track him down. It's the rookie Jackson Ford who gets there and stops another big play from Brady Oliveira. Well, you know, I think Brady Oliveira just told us what we should do with regards to last week's story. <laughs> it's over. Move Let's on. move on because he's moving on. What a run up the middle. Just bobbing his way and weaving his way through that defensive line in front seven and Adam Big Hill on the sideline who gave us a great perspective on that whole episode last week and Pete Robertson and how they would treat it if it was their teammate. Now they'll hand it off to Schoen and he gets wrapped up down inside the 20. A big Hill looked at it in a big picture way and talked about the game and just the respect of the game and when you look at his direct quote to us is it's in football you have to control your emotions it's mandatory you can never let your emotions dictate your decisions and and that's exactly what happened Pete Robertson is not a dirty player he's gonna serve his suspension he'll be back we're moving on Bombers in the scoring position. That being said, the Riders could very much use him today. Second and four, Kolaris under pressure, throws it ahead. What a play by Zach. Went pretty all of down to the five. And so touchdown, Winnipeg. A little magic from Kolaris. And Oliveira finishes the job. Well, two things. First of all, yeah. Magic from Zach Kolaris, keeping the play alive, finding the target, and getting it to number 20. But was there any doubt that Brady Oliveira was going to get in the end zone here when he got the football? None. He was a freight train. He was getting to the goal line after he saw his teammate make that play. He was going to score. What a start to this game for Brady Oliveira. If you've got him in fantasy, you're loving life right now. He's got a touchdown already. He's got almost 60 yards on four carries and a couple of big plays in the passing attack as well. One more knocked through, and the Bombers are rolling early. Three play, 59 yard drive that took us a minute and 43 seconds. Just to the left of Zach Kolaris is Brady Oliveira, who's going to spy for blitz. And then when he doesn't have a guy to help out, then he just releases as a safety valve. And just in time, Zach Kolaris sees him. And away goes Brady Oliveira again. So there's going to be some contact right around the goal line area. And there is no way he would be denied on that. Ninth touchdown of the season for Brady Oliveira. Six of them on the ground, three of them through the air, and his monster season continues to roll on. He's already put up numbers that a lot of players would be happy with in a game.
three minutes left here in the first quarter. On pace for a 200 yarder. But yeah, I mean, the Riders are going to have to make some defensive adjustments because a great first quarter for number 20. And again, over a thousand yards. Only needed 10 coming into this one. We're in what, week 13? Cruising along. Gala awaiting an opportunity. They'll kick it away from Alford. This is taken by Bertrand Houdon, drafted this past year. Brings it all the way back out. Powers his way just shy of the 40. Pretty good return. And now Dola Gala has to put together a drive to get some momentum here, doesn't he? Well, absolutely. I mean, you, you in this game for sure, this can get out of hand quickly. I mean, there have been some lopsided scores in this one. And I don't even want to bring up the one because I've been spending my whole life trying to forget <laughs> it back in the 90s. I want to say it was 52-3 or something like that. That doesn't sound very good, Glenn. No, not <laughs> fun. Not fun at all. We'll start on their 40-yard line. Gola Gala looking for Jones incomplete. Mario Houston on his back there. Big play in the a week ago in that game. He was working on Demario Houston, who tried to undercut a play, and he got a nice 45-yarder in a key moment in that game, but it wasn't happening on that dig route. Second down. Big Hill bringing pressure again. Dola Gala gets it away. Incomplete. It is he threw. Jeffcoat was there to finish the job on the Riders quarterback. Absolutely right about the blitz. First of all, Big Hill's going. You'll see him to the right of your screen, step up. He's going to crawl towards the line of scrimmage here, and then he has timed it up nicely. Jeffcoat and Jefferson. It was Jackson Jeffcoat with the contact. Found that target area, clean hit, just as the ball was being released. Two and out for the Riders. Korsak takes it cleanly, gets it away. Another low kick. This one will bounce at the 25, trickle all the way down. Parker takes it on a hop, brings it back up the field. Gets it back just outside the 20. And Zach Kolaris and the offense back out here on the field. I want to show you this touchdown throw where he created some magic here, kept it alive. He took a pretty good hit here, and that, as we were watching on the sideline, there's some in the back of his helmet. He was having some, some attention down here on the sideline during that last Dola Gala series. Back out there, looks like he'll be okay, but we'll keep our eye on him. Zach has started four of four for 42 yards and a touchdown pass in this game. <laughs> Blow up banjo. Bunch of different types of banjos in the house this afternoon. Polaris to his right. Completion. Another big one. Brady Oliveira. Look at him. Go unstoppable here in the first quarter is number 20 in blue. The Riders brought a few more defenders into the box, but they put Brady Oliveira and they took him out of the box, put him out on the sideline. Lots of space in front of him. And he's not running out of bounds. He's going in to find contact. What a start to this game for Oliveira. Three catches already in this game. Kolaris, a perfect five for five. On the ground again. And a good hard five yards against this Riders defense. Well, this is how they started the game anyway. Micah Johnson having an all-star year quietly. And, and there is Cody Roscoe out of Syracuse who is playing for Pete Robertson. We told you that story. There he is. He's replaced him for this one game. They're putting Derek Moncrief at linebacker. Now, he can go back and play safety. They don't have Jaden Dalkey in the lineup. Jackson Ford will start there, but they can rotate him through there because C.J. Revis is back on the roster as well and can play in Derek Moncrief's spot. 
moving pieces on that defense. Polaris looks to his left. That's where he's going to throw. And he's got Getsky who gets tripped up after he picks up the first down, or he might have had a lot of room to work with. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Moncrief got him, though. Just made the tackle. He gets outside, and he's going to just run this quick out. Moncrief's in good position, tried to get to the football and didn't, and just trips him up because if he doesn't get that one, he's still running. Fourth different player to catch a ball from Kolaris in the opening quarter. Final play of the first. Dembski and shown into the slot to the left. They'll have a completion at the 50 for a short pickup. First of the game for Rashid Bailey, and that is how the first quarter will come to a close. Zach Kolaris, perfect first quarter, no incompletion. Brady Oliveira. Over a hundred yards of total offense and a touchdown. Bombers lead the Banjo Bowl. Back to IG Field in Winnipeg. Bombers on top, 14 to three. Pretty dominant first quarter. 158 yards of offense, 113 of them by the running back, Brady Oliveira. So there's exactly what the Riders have to do defensively to make an adjustment. Key in on number 20. He's having a big quarter and a big game so far. You know people in the panel and everybody was talking about how the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are are they the same dominant team they were are they still the number one team in the league and after they lost to Ottawa they went on a five game win streak including one that they put 50 on the BC Lions just to prove that point <laughs> and change the narrative and you know I think after the loss on Labor Day they're trying to do the exact same thing right here that was the first loss they had since Kenny Lawler rejoined the lineup they had been perfect five for five up until that point. Kolaris is seven for seven, 75 yards and a touchdown pass in this ball game. Five man pressure. Kolaris dumps it off over the middle. Another completion. It's up to the 40 back to back passes to Rashid Bailey. And he's got another Winnipeg first down. They're 11th of the ball game. So many weapons in this bomber offense and, and in the receiving core. But Bailey, who is a slot. Just outside to the left of the short side of the field on a crossing route. He's had a quiet season, but is available and ready and contributing in other ways. Maybe the best run blocker in the receiving group. They all have a role, right? He's Absolutely. got three touchdowns on the year, too. But don't fall asleep on 88. Back to Oliveira. Short gain right up the middle on first down. So that's the question. I know the panel talked about it. You know, some people have talked that this this club is starting to get a little bit older. And are they still number one? And you look at the stats and the numbers and the real sort of indicators when it comes to wins and losses. And they're number one across the board with that great nine and three record too. And don't lose back to back. Now there's a lot of football to be played here. I'm not giving them the win <laughs> at the beginning of the second quarter. But we're seeing that the field is tilted right now. Two of their losses in overtime. This one incomplete. Multiple flags here on the play. That eight passing touchdowns allowed is a pretty impressive stat for this Winnipeg defense. Boy, Nick Marshall almost had one there. He uh, had an interception last weekend. Offside, Saskatchewan. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Ian Jamarcus Hardrick having a little discussion there after the play was over. Marshall going back to his side of the field. Tied for second in the league in interceptions behind Demero Houston, who has seven for the Bombers already this season. Yeah, a couple of the top four guys in this game tonight. Prukop needing a yard. He's going to try to stretch this out. He's got a little bit of space, takes it down to the 25. Comfortable pickup there for Dakota Prukop. It's got to be very nice for the coaching staff to have a reliable veteran guy like Prukop to handle those duties. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's it's so important, these short yardage plays for every team. I mean, we could have a, a rating system on the best short yardage quarterbacks in the league because there's some great ones, and that you have to become a specialist and take pride in it. 
you only get four or five snaps a game sometimes but they're huge snaps especially on third and one when the coach goes for it I like the idea of a power rankings of <laughs> short yardage QB somebody there you, listening there you go put it together on X for us or whatever it's called here's Kolaris on the run out to his right has a completion at the five Kenny Lawler spin move trying to stay on his feet punching forward and they're gonna mark him just shy of a touchdown that was close He's saying, I was in. Still trying to sell it. Let's take a look and see if he was. Nick Marshall trying to make the tackle. Nice spin move there. Jackson Ford gave it a shot. Ooh. Well, the ground can't make you fumble, so he's down there. It's whether or not he was down before the ball crossed the plane. The previous play is under review by the command center. Oh, I think he kept his knees off the ground as he lunged forward. I can see why he was trying to make a case for this. It looked like that right knee was, was going to touch down, but, he, but it didn't. There was space underneath there, wasn't it, from that look? This one will take another look. Is that left knee on the ground? Or did it touch and bounce up? The ruling is it's on the one. So they're going to have to have enough evidence here to turn this over, turn it into a touchdown. But every potential score or score is automatically reviewed. It's just hard to tell the timing of that left knee. And I think the knee touched and then came back up. That's, that's that what I think the ref elevated? saw. I think it was uh, I, I think by his conviction upon review by the command center the ruling on the field is overturned to a touchdown. Kenny Lawler knew it all along didn't he fifth touchdown of the season and the bombers have blown this thing wide open early. This was successful for the Bombers on Sunday to get Zach Kolaris outside. Lots of motion, change of direction. Lawler crossing the field from the left side of the offensive formation all the way across with his quarterback was wide open in the hole and then he did cross the plane. Kenny Lawler. Timer. Please reset the game clock to read 12 minute 28. We had mentioned they had not lost a game prior to last week since Kenny Lawler was able to rejoin the lineup. Winnipeg's offense averaging over 31 points per game. And Castillo gives them 21 points early in the second quarter a nine play 88 yard drive finished off by Kenny Lawler stretching out for the touchdown. Game tonight excellent rematch coming up in Edmonton between the Stampeders and Elks after just a thrilling finish in that Labor Day game five days ago. Quite a bit of green in the crowd tonight. Tickets not easy to come by. Game's been sold out for quite some time. They're hoping their team can figure it out here. This guy can always help. Mario Alford trying to find some room. Takes it back just shy of the 40. That last drive for Winnipeg took over five minutes off the clock. So Jake Dolagala here, three of six to start this game, just hasn't been on the field much. Take another look at Kenny Lawler here. The Riders and Micah Johnson told us that that motion before the snap they call eye candy. It tries to distract the defenders, but you got to drag across the field, find that open spot. Lawler did. And Kolaris delivered the strike. Saskatchewan will start this drive on their own 39. It's loud in here. <laughs> just a bit. Eh? It's, it's just a bit. It is loud in here. And it's just been like constant noise the entire game. 
Those things obviously would help with that. You gotta, you gotta manage your Vuvuzela use, though. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't be on that thing the entire game. That's just, that's just too much. I am a big fan of the cowbell, though. Lots of cowbells in attendance here. Makes it more difficult for the officials to communicate as well. They're trying to hear from the command center and trying to figure out what they're sorting out here. No flag on that return. This might have been just the spot of the ball, but it's taken a little bit longer through the crowd noise. Uh, we'll remain on the 39. Olegala gets this one away far side. Just over midfield. Schaefer Baker's got it. His third catch of the ball game. Yeah, the, the number one goal here for Jake Dolagala is just to simply stay on the field for a few first downs just to take away some momentum and keep Zach Kolaros on the sideline. I mean, that's step number one, and then start thinking about points when you get closer, but slow this momentum. Just the third first down of the game for the visitor. Schaefer Baker up into the slot. Near the top of your screen, Moro will pop over to the right of Dolagala here. Bombers bring some pressure. Dolagala trying to escape, staying on his feet, and eventually tracked down from behind. But he avoids a sack and actually picks up a couple of yards before Jeffcoat takes him down. He will run. He can run. Sort of prototypical six foot seven, 240 pound pocket passer, but that's 15 carries. Coming into this one in just his three starts. Jefferson and Jeffcoat both there to bring him down. Second and seven after the three yard scramble pickup. Golagala gets this one away near side to Jones. He's got a completion for a first down. And the Riders quarterback starting to settle in a little bit. Looks like some extra protection here from the Riders as well to give him some time. Well, good timing on the throw. And this is Jake Dolagala with a little play action, one, two step throw. And just as Jones is coming out of his break, that's a great angle to show you the receiver coming out of his break with the quarterback releasing it right then and leading him to the sideline. First catch of the game for Jones puts him over 700 yards receiving on the season. Dolagala wanting to throw again in trouble. This time he will be taken down. Ran out of room, and a number of bombers were there for the sack. Yeah, I'm going to give the assist to the secondary for the bombers on this one because Dolagala had time initially. Pretty good protection here. There's play action now. He's got one, two, stop, throw, 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 throw. Nope, covered, covered, covered. Now it breaks down, and you're in trouble. Cramby got there too. Cramby gets there. It's first sack of the season second and a long 17 they'll hand it off to Morrow right up the middle Jamal Morrow trying to push ahead gets a little bit of help they stop him just shy of the 30 but a pretty good pickup there on second and 17 Jamal Morrow his best run of the ball game it'll be tempting here I'm sure for Craig Dickinson but it's three four yards I think you got to take the points and that is what they will do It'd be tempting when you look at the scoreboard, but we're it's at least three yards. But so. we're in the first half. Yeah. I mean, take the points. It's a good decision. Fred Lother coming into this game. 28 of 32 has hit one today from 27 yards. This one will be straight away from 39 yards out. We'll stop this Winnipeg 21 point run right down the middle cannot be any more accurate for Brett Lothar today. He's been on a nice little run. Here to a game in Winnipeg for a long time since the 2019 championship. Polaris pressure in his face dumps it over the top and that one will fall incomplete. First incompletion of the day for Kolaris. Arizona Cardinal former Jet the Jets but back in 2019 a big part of that run two seasons with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and of course the Grey Cup celebration with the big old school fur coat and cowboy hat that's 
that legacy has lived on here for a lot of fans in this province. Yeah, that is an image that you tie in to that Great Cup championship team. Yeah, he was very excited to get back up here to Winnipeg and talk about how important this market, this team was. Kolaris over the middle, Lawler, he's got it at the 45. And Kenny Lawler, his third catch of the ball game. There's a flag back by the quarterback who's slow to get up. A little bit of a rough ride for Zach so far here today. There are two fouls on the play, holding Winnipeg number 68, major foul, roughing the passer, Saskatchewan number 91. We're going to go up five yards, automatic first down. This is who got the penalty on the late hit on the quarterback on Zach Kolaras. That's Lanier coming off the edge, goes around, and Kolaras gets rid of the ball there, and then the two-hander in the back. That's one. Also a low hit. I believe it was Miles Brown on the low hit. And then there was a holding at the line of scrimmage as well. They got it all sorted out to first down Winnipeg on their own 45. Empty backfield for Kolaris this time. Thought about going deep. Now dumps it off to Brady Oliveira near side. And Brady stumbled a little bit. And then was finished off by A.J. Allen and Larry Dean. I think you're right about the rough ride that number eight's taken in this one here this evening. I mean, Larry Dean's up in the line of scrimmage, but he's show blitz, and this is four man pressure. Lanier with another tackle as he's throwing. I mean, that's not a late hit or a bad hit in any shape or form, but. Still something Zach has to deal with. It's though, right? a, yeah, it's another ice bag later. Three more yards is what they need. Oliveira's got that and more. Brady Oliveira takes it down inside the 50. That'll put him over 70 yards on the ground here in the first half. And Larry Dean in the middle of their screen here. When, the, when you can get your lineman onto the linebacker, you've got a chance for a play in the run game. I believe that was Jeff Gray getting out there on Larry Dean, getting a nice block, lead block in the hole. Oliveira could get the first down territory. Oliveira well on his way to another 100-yard game. He already has five of them this season. Now they'll give it to Bailey. Rashid Bailey, heavy collision at the 45, a flag in the secondary as well. With Jackson Ford coming up to make a tackle on... Rashid Bailey holding what a bag number 10 10 yard penalty we're going to replay first down Nick Dembski trying to open up some space for his fellow slot receiver didn't get away with it and that'll back Winnipeg up with just over 16 remaining 16 minutes remaining here in the first half of the banjo bowl Jackson Ford, a different type of player than Jaden Dalkey. Dalkey, more of a linebacker type size. Bigger build, player, yeah. Bigger build can, you know, both can hit though. And Jason Jackson Ford, more of a DB size safety. 11th overall pick, second pick of the second round in this year's draft. Kolaris. Now he's going to heave one way down the field, looking for Schoen. Schoen hauls it in. Biggest play of the game for Dalton Schoen. He made it look routine. Deontay Williams didn't really know how to play this. This is this is just a straight sort of cover four look. Nick Marshall, this is not Nick Marshall's man. He's got the shorter zone. He just follows it on because he sees the ball being thrown in that direction. That was Williams over the top that just kind of got crossed up and basically had a good ticket to watch that one. Oliveira this time finally stopped near the line of scrimmage. The Riders will throw him back. Quite the 
adjustment to the football for Schoen to spin all the way back around, get the feet in bounds. You only need one. He got two. He did make it look easy, but it wasn't easy, was it? No, it wasn't. Yeah. And Deontay Williams was just kind of, I don't know, maybe mesmerized by the spin or something. He, he was just, just there. He was just standing beside him, not really sure how to play it. Another big year for Dalton Schoen. Second and ten for Winnipeg. Polaris. Back to Sean again. This time he's in. Touchdown, Winnipeg. Zach Polaris' third passing touchdown of the first half. And it's looking like a blowout in the Banjo Bowl. Well, I say another big year because, you know, the, the last three games for Dalton Schoen, the yardage hasn't been off the map. The yardage hasn't been over the 100-yard mark in the last few games, but he's scoring touchdowns. He's had three touchdowns in the last three games. Now he's added another one in the fourth, plus tacking up some yards. Just another real consistent big year for Dalton Schoen. 24 career touchdowns for Schoen. 16 as a rookie, and now eight already this season. Zach Kolaris, we talked about the interesting week he had after taking the headbutt from Robertson. He's 12 of 13 for 174 yards and three touchdowns in the first half. Castillo for a 22 point lead. And that's exactly what he does. Blue Bombers getting some revenge on the Riders, at least here in the early going. A receiver like Dalton Schoen, who's got a tremendously high football IQ. Watch him take a look at where Williams is lined up. He's looking at 24 right now. If he's head up, he probably runs a curl inside. But because he sees inside leverage from Williams, he runs the out. Basically, a read route where no matter what you do as a DB, you're wrong. <laughs> Sounds like a difficult job. <laughs> Alford, just inside his own 20, spins his way just outside the 35. Big start here for Jake Dolagala. For more on him, let's send it down to John Luke. Well, Jake Dolagala says that the loudest game he's ever taken part in was when he was a healthy scratch with the Cincinnati Bengals at their season opener in Seattle in September 2019. And Dolagala says that uh, as a, uh, a backup who got a few reps in last year's Banjo Bowl, the volume rivaled that as well. So this is a completely different animal as the starter. And to that end, part of his preparation this week was practicing with crowd noise in Regina. The rest of his prep was driven by the confidence that he's gained in two straight wins over the top two teams in the West Division, but he's also finding out Winnipeg Blue Bombers are a very different animal after losing on, at the Labor Day Classic, guys. Yeah, different team at home. Five and one so far at home this year are the Bombers. What? Completion to Tevin Jones there. Watch how Dolagala here will lift his leg on the snap count. I'll show you. Watch. Watch Dola Gala. There he lifts his leg. Back to Jones again. Demario Houston finishes him off. So that's that's how you're trying to handle offensively some of the crowd noise. So the crowd, you can't you can't shout out the signals. Hard to hear them from the coach, first of all, because that's what he's doing now. But you can't shout out the signals. They won't hear it, the teammates. So you got to lift up the leg. And any time after that, Peter Godberg can snap the football. So every one of the offensive guys have to be looking at Peter Godber on their way to the line of scrimmage. Winnipeg brings some pressure, gets rid of it quickly. Schaefer Baker on the far side of the field, trying to stretch it ahead. He will be stopped short and, and of the first down. What that does, Dustin, it takes away from your advantage offensively because the snap count is advantage offense. You know what the snap count is. The defense has to react when the ball moves. Doesn't matter what they hear. They just react when the ball moves. So when you can't use the snap count to your advantage, it takes away that edge from the offense. Now you got to lift your leg, and Peter Godford decides when you're going to snap it. Pipkin into the game. Third and one on the rider, 54. They can't even hear the call now.
Pipkin trying to push ahead. I don't know. I don't think he got it. I'm not sure it was even close. Needed the 55. And that'll be a turnover on downs as things go from bad to worse for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Taking away the snap count. That's crowd noise. Pipkin. Simply nowhere to go. Why is it always the guys with no hair? Unbelievable. They're always primping. Viva. Oh, don't go anywhere. Halftime breakdown coming up. Winnipeg gets the ball back here. This is bad news for the Riders. Winnipeg has scored a touchdown on all four possessions in this ballgame, and that's after scoring on the first eight possessions in some way, shape, or form of last year's Banjo Bowl. They'll get it to Lawler. Lawler takes it down inside the 45. Another Winnipeg first down. Let's go back to the big stop on defense for the Bombers to give them another shot with the football before halftime. Here it is, and you're going to see Adam Big Hill again jump into your screen from the right. And he stops the forward momentum of Antonio Pipkin. No go. The no fly zone. Adam Big Hill's in there. You okay going for it? I mean, you're down by 22. You're, it's a yard. No, oh, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, you, you kind of got to get something going offensively here at this point. Bombers didn't allow it to happen. And now Brady Oliveira, massive hole right up the middle. And he comes. Ahead for another first down for Winnipeg. Demarcus Hardrick is going to get on that second level as I talked about in the run game. You got to get somehow an offensive lineman big on little. It's called you get the big on little right here. That's Demarcus Hardrick on Larry Dean. Maybe a little bit of holding, but get. Big guys on the linebackers. You got it. Your running back is loving it. 88 yards on the ground for Oliveira. Kolaris down to Sean again. Got it again. Come on. Five touchdowns for the Bombers. Second of the game for Sean. And the party is on at IG Field. Well, based on what's happening here, five series, five offensive possessions for the Bombers, five touchdowns, two to Schoen. Time he took Nick Marshall, got in behind him. You may see Drew Brown early in the second half. We saw Drew Brown last year in this game because the Bombers had it in full control. And boy, do they ever hear 35 to 6. Buck Pierce looking like a genius right now. Well, the execution of Zach Kolaris is just off the hook great. I mean, three receivers to the wide side of the field. The guy just circled as Dalton shown. There he is, and he's going down the numbers. Now, Nick Marshall looks like he's looking back to possibly play the ball. Meanwhile, Shone is just separating. And then it's too late to get there. Kolaris on the roll, throwing on the run. Nice little drop in the bucket over the shoulder to Shone. Tremendous accuracy. Saw the DB in a trail position. Led Shone out in front. Some adjustments to be made for Jason Shivers, defensive coordinator. Last year in the Banjo Bowl, Kolaris had four touchdown passes, 273 yards. This year in the first half, he has four touchdown passes, 217 yards. Now 26 touchdown passes on the year. Far and away, your league leader, Mario Alford. Can he provide a spark? Does not look like it. Bombers downfield, forcing him out of bounds. 
with a minute and 39 seconds left in the half. Well, the key for Saskatchewan now is don't look at the scoreboard. Just play football. Honestly, it doesn't. That's not going to help you in any way, shape, or form. Just don't look at the scoreboard. Think of it as one play at a time, one completion at a time, one block at a time, and see what happens as the game kind of unfolds in the second half. But can't stop. They can't stop the Bomber offense right now. Start on their own 20. Nola Gala completes it up to the 35. And that'll be taken all the way up to the 40, but a 20-yard pickup the first time today that Samuel Emelis has touched the ball. Jake Dolagalas, he's nice. He throws a nice football. He does, doesn't he? Nice yeah. tight spiral. Make the wide throws. I asked Zach, Zach Kolaris actually about him. I always do. I asked the veteran quarterbacks about the young guys. He said, real impressed with his arm strength to the outsides. He goes there a lot too. Yeah. A lot of action on the outside here. Four options to his left. Goes to his right. That one get rid of it quickly and it falls incomplete prior to that he had completed 75 percent of his passes so far in this game hasn't turned it over as their defense cannot stop Winnipeg whenever they're on the field and Dola Gala had a big hill problem there he had a big hill issue a lot of people over the years <laughs> have had a big hill issue <laughs> went on a blitz there and was right beside him Saskatchewan's defense does give up the most points in the league at 27.5. They've surrendered 35 here in the first half. Gala gets this one away again to his running back. And Retta Cramdy is a problem for Jamal Morrow, and that'll bring a third down. 16th overall pick by the Bombers in 21. Just keeps keep getting better with every rep. Yeah, and they've got some guys that are that are playing fantastic, having good seasons. Evan Holm, Greta Cramdy, Ricky Walker. And these talented guys in this team that you kind of lose some of them. And they've worked their way into a, what was already a really good defense, right? Talk about Jefferson and Jeff Code all the time and Big Hill, of course, but some unsung heroes on this team. Forsak gets it away, spinning it to the waiting arms of Parker, who is taken down immediately by Deontay Williams. Well, lots to discuss on both sides of this football. Winnipeg's offense looks terrific. Riders looking for answers here, and Kate and the panel will try to have some of those answers for you at halftime. Well, started out the game pounding Brady Oliveira, and Riders are going to have to adjust to that at halftime. That's loading the box more. What that does, though, is put a little more pressure on your secondary. You have to bring those linebackers closer to the line of scrimmage. Handing it off again to Oliveira. And a pretty good chunk right up the middle. Give him at least five yards on that carry. I thought that Zach Kolaris may try to really test Jackson Ford in the middle. Now, he's not a one-on-one -on -one guy. It's not like you look at a matchup there. Your free safety is not that type of player, but he really hasn't. I mean, they're just running their offense. I think Jackson Ford is doing a pretty nice job in his first start in the middle. Second and five as the clock ticks down. Kolaris. Another big shot down the field, drops it in at the 30. Kenny Lawler all the way down to the 10, and the Bombers continue to pour it on against their rivals. Nick Marshall gets up and press here against Kenny Lawler. Kalara saw it immediately. Lawler a little move off the line of scrimmage. Again, there's that separation. Marshall's not looking back. That didn't cause it that time. That was just a foot race, and Lawler won it. First and goal from the Saskatchewan 8 as Winnipeg looks to add to the misery of the Riders here late in the second quarter. Polaris. Completion. It is all 
Winnipeg. Wow. Mentioned Nick Marshall's interception last week. He's having a tough first half this week. Dalton Schoen's last three catches. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And just like that, he has 10 on the season. And Winnipeg has hung 42 on the Riders in the first half of the Banjo Bowl. Little change motion up here between Lawler and, and Dalton Schoen, and you see Nick Marshall in the top right-hand corner of your screen up here. He's just going to be a little bit high in his back pedal and a little bit soft down on the goal line. That's the bang route from Dalton Schoen. He just plays off them both by about four yards. And Zach Kalara says, "Hey, if you're going to you're going to play off 83, I'm gonna put it right between those two numbers for him." Third touchdown in a row for. Dalton Schoen. Six possessions, six touchdowns. Absolutely ridiculous what Winnipeg is doing. I don't know if you'll see Zach Kolaris again in this game. I don't know why you'd roll him out in the second half when you're up 42 to six. But we'll see. Yeah, I agree. We'll see Drew Brown at some point, we, but we I don't will. know why you'd bring Zach back out. Dude. We will. Maybe to start the half my, and my, then a series yeah, or maybe, two. Maybe. Riders shell shocked. Low kick. This one will be stopped and brought back up to the near side. All the way out beyond the 45. And Glenn, what can you say? What can you say about this half? Holy smokes. Don't look at the score clock if you're wearing white and green. Come out and play a half of football. Don't look at the scoreboard. Play a half of football for the Bombers. Hey, their fans are loving this. Loving it. Zach Kolaris, 285 yards, five touchdowns. Brady Oliveira, his running back, 10 carries for 93 yards. He also had four catches for 57 yards and a touchdown. That's where it really all started, isn't it? Yeah, he set the tone. I mean, their offensive line did in the trenches and just... Basically open it up for Brady Oliveira both through the air and running the ball. Basically set the tone of the game in the first quarter and then Zach Kolaris went to work through the air as the second quarter came on and started hitting 83. Brady Oliveira is with our John Luke. Brady, I have a feeling that you're going to mention bully ball. Yeah. Because the video will expose you there if you do that as a player. Hey, a chance to make history. Biggest comeback in Banjo Bowl history, 11 points. There you go. We got about 36 to overcome here. Something to look forward to. Here's Mario Alford to the 30. Now Alford stopped at the 39. And they've kept Alford in check for most of the evening after he put up well over 200 return yards. Eric, last week, Dolagala, 10 of 14, 92 yards. Didn't turn the ball over anything, just basically spent most of the half on the sideline watching. Exactly. And six touchdown drives by Zach Kolaris. He just didn't get on the field very much. Kolaris, five touchdown passes in the first half, ties his career high for a game. Quick. Toss out to Jamal Morrow. Big Hill wraps him up and takes him down just outside the Ryder 45. You know, and the Bombers have to do the same thing. They have to keep playing hard. And it's a different reason and a different feeling. You're way out ahead. You know, you feel, but you can't, you can't let, as a player in this scenario, you can't let relaxing because you're so far ahead creep into your mind because that's when you can get injured. Seven-yard pickup for Morrow. Leaves him in second and three in their own 46. Back to the ground. Morrow trying to push ahead. And that extra effort, a little bit of help from his offensive line, has enough for a Saskatchewan first down. Willie Jefferson was hanging on there. He tried to watch number five, grab him by the jersey, and just cut. Get back here. No, get back. Good. 
No. Yeah, okay. Strong right. fingers. <laughs> Had him by just a couple of them. Has to hang on for a little bit. Got an extra push there for Brandon Council. I think that helped Morrow get to where he needed to go. Fresh set at the 49 for the Riders. Lagala. Completion. Emily spin move. And then taken down. Kyrie Wilson comes over to help out on the tackle. The other thing, if you're a bomber now, and, and I, I'm just going to say it, you, you shouldn't probably think this way, but, but you do as a player. You're way ahead. You start thinking about stats. Maybe I could, uh, maybe I could pad my, my totals if I'm Jackson Jeffco with a couple sacks here in this, in this runaway win. And Willie Jefferson's been off the board for a few weeks in a row here. He'd love one. Pipkin able to turn it back upfield, and that'll be enough for a first down for the visitors. I agree with Craig Dickinson, though, about the first half for the Riders not being typical of what they've shown the last couple of weeks. I mean, two weeks in a row, they beat top two teams in the division. They've got a receiving core that is kind of flown under the radar as far as receiving cores in the league. Everyone talks about this one for yeah. the Bombers, of course. The rightfully BC, so. Yeah. yeah, rightfully so. The BC Lion receiving core, rightfully so. And meanwhile, this receiving core in Saskatchewan gets better every every game. They'll hand it off to the rookie. Nice push ahead, and that'll be a first down for Bertrand Houdon. A pretty big hit there in the middle from the safety in Brandon Alexander. Udon just lowered the pad level and took it on. Good for him. All star safety coming downhill. 30th overall pick out of Delaware State. Now getting looked at on the sidelines after the end of that last play. Bill Gallup. The Winnipeg 39. Outside. Emelis spins it back up. And he's got another first down for the Riders. And finally something to build on offensively, even though you're trailing 42 to 6. Well, despite the you know the scoreboard, and for Jake Dolagala, who's in start number four, valuable reps yeah. against a very good defense. Wide out position, little bang route again. Seeing a lot of those. Once again, Bola Gala down the field. Schaefer Baker got turned around. Ball was behind him, got a hand on it, but couldn't haul it in. I think the pressure collapsing around Dola Gala, he just he rushed this just a bit. And I, I don't mean rush it, it is in, it was his mistake. Rushed it because he had to. Or he was getting sacked, and it was a heater outside. Thrown a couple behind Schaefer Baker so far today. One would have been a touchdown in the early going. Second and ten for the 26, and flags fly as that ball is snapped. Illegal procedure. Saskatchewan number 61. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. Brandon Council. Backed him up five yards. He's into the game. Colin Kelly injured. Council gets in. First year rider out of Auburn. Second and 15. there and takes him down and Dola Gala is back up but he was slow getting up third down yeah and speaking of Brandon Council he's the the right tackle now in fairness to Council he's played left tackle this season different footwork and that time Jeff Jackson Jeffcoat pads the stats Fifth sack of the season for Jeffcoat. He came out of that with the football. Still has it in his hands there. And the officials are discussing the end of that play. 
See if we can get another look at this. Is this ball out? Yes, it is out. Does he recover it immediately? Well, actually, it looks yeah, like it does. Looks like he might have. Slow motion. There it is out. Dolagala originally had his hands back on it, but Jeffco swoops in there and takes this ball away. So on the previous play, the quarterback for he, before he would hit the ground there and the ball was recovered by Winnipeg. Therefore, first down Winnipeg. Jeffco does it all. Second force fumble of the year for 94. One of those five guys is right beside you, Joe Poplowski, number 71, one of your former teammates. Uh, how many of them reached out to you after learning that you would be honored this way? Uh, quite a few. Quite a few. As a matter of fact, I got an uh, email or text from Joe today. He's in 106 today uh, looking down, and, and uh, I know we used to sit by each other in the locker room. So, uh, and, and he was one of the first guys when I came up to Canada to play, he and Rick House, that really, really motivated me and, and, and uh, had, it gave me an opportunity to say, hey, man, this is a great football league, and, and it's because of those guys. Is this honor magnified in that this is happening at a time when the Bombers are going through a run of success not dissimilar from your three Grey Cups in the 80s? Well, I, I guess you can, you, can, you can say that. You know, these guys have, uh, deserve all the credit. They've earned it. And they really remind me of uh, the era that we played in in the 80s. So uh, we're looking for, uh, as you know, anything can happen in the CFL. It's been a great uh, to watch them this year. And uh, in 1988, we were, we were a 9-9 football team and, and uh, ended up winning a great cup. So anything is uh, it's possible. So that's why every week you have to come to play. And these guys, I love the, their energy. And these fans are the, are, are the energy. They are, uh, you know, that few, they're the few that fuel these guys. And so the energy behind them and it's just a great I'm mean, just so happy and, and thrilled to be a part of it yeah well the fans certainly gave you love at halftime again congratulations James and thank you for spending time with us here thank you very much 15th person to be honored up top James Murphy was tough as they came for me you know when you when you try to get a hit on a receiver you always, as a DB or linebacker, getting a hit on a receiver, you want to take a look at him. We, as you're getting up and he's getting up, you look if it really affected him. Did it affect him or not? You can't really intimidate a pro athlete, but, I mean, this is a big hits affect him. And James Murphy would have this smile, that smile he's got on his face right now, no matter how hard you hit him, it would be like, oh, yeah, good, first down. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Over 9,000 yards, 61 touchdowns, nine years. Six of those years, he had 1,000-yard seasons. Oh, he has a 1,000-yard season right now pushing ahead. One of the best. I mean, you know, and, and that, that team had great offensive lines, excellent quarterbacking, and those teams with that he played on, good run game. Much like, I, I think that was a great question by John, and just to compare you know a really good bomber team and bomber offense that is very balanced with Brady Oliveira right now in the passing game with Zach Kolaris and his receiving court. Zach Kolaris 300 yards passing today. Fifth 300 yard game of the year for him. Prukop into the game short yardage didn't need much third and inches and he has got the job done Winnipeg's offense will stay on the field. We'll be interested to see how Michael O'Shea handles that now with Zach Kolaris. Are you, you know, do you give him this series, eat up halfway or most of the third quarter, yeah. and then that's it? You know, the, the no lead is safe slogan that is true most of the time in but, the CFL. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's true most of the time. I'm not sure it's going to be true this time, but it's true most of the time. He's out there now. Tied his career high today with five touchdown passes. His running back's got 100 yards. Schoen and Lawler both have 100 yards. It'll back on the ground again. And look at this. Look 
at this pile being moved here. Still eventually stopped shy of a first down, but what an effort here in the third quarter by a Bomber team leading by a bunch. And then you think about Nick Dembski, who's he's on pace for a 1,200-yard season. Already has his career high this year. Career high, yeah, last week as far as like in-game, but I, it was interesting. John mentioned Joe Poplowski and Rick House back in those days, the Canadian receivers that were part of the really great Bomber teams in the 80s, and They've got that sort of element here too with Nick Dembski. Dembski at 29 years old looks like he's still just getting better and better every year. Second and three. Mukop in the game. He'll hand it off. And Brady Oliveira has another Winnipeg first down. Six touchdowns on six possessions in the first half of this ball game. Zach Kolaris has never not bounced back after a loss with Winnipeg. 6-0 following a defeat since joining the club. Yeah, not as a starter here. That's quite remarkable, really. I mean, his record as a bomber just crazy good. Gets hit, gets hammered as he throws. And that one almost intercepted. And this is the discussion we have about Zach exactly. being in the football game still. He took a heavy hit as he let that one fly. Interested to see what Bombers fans think about this. Well, it, exactly. And, you know, again, based on last week, and we've let we've moved on from it, but it's a very different scenario of stuff that happens within the play and stuff that happens after the whistle. And Last week was after the whistle incident. This week is in play. Some of these hits you can discuss and talk about. Were they close? Were they late? All of those things. But the question, too, the bigger picture question is, Zach Kolaris is still in the game. You know, it's 42-6, and that's what you're concerned with if you're Michael O'Shea. That, yeah. As he's throwing, he gets hit. Well, you have a backup who's really good, too, in Drew Brown, right? Like We're going to see Drew Brown here at some point, I would think. Kolaris towards the far side. Drops it. He's calling for a flag. That would have been a career high sixth passing touchdown for Zach. He wants Coach O'Shea to go ahead and challenge this. Lawler's on the outside, press coverage again. This time it's Jeremy Clark. Distracted enough to drop that one. We've seen Lawler pull in a number of remarkable catches just this season since returning to Winnipeg. Castillo puts it through. Points on every possession for Winnipeg. In full control of the Bangable. Dot com slash Fortinet Cup. Well, this game is no longer in doubt, but this was a little bit earlier in the game, and guys still got to put in 100% effort. Tanner Cadwallander goes all the way down on this cover team, gets his helmet blasted off, stays in the fight, stays in there without it. That gets you pushed up closer to the starting defensive lineup pretty quickly. Will for Gloria Pratt. Willie Jefferson all over it. Schaefer Baker nowhere to go. As soon as he got that ball, Jefferson had gobbled him up. Throughout his career, Willie Jefferson can redirect like the best of them. I mean, he, he's as good as it gets. Changing directions for a big man. Five-yard loss. Okay. Oh, goal again. Oh, spins baby. away from one. Retta Cramdy is there, and he'll take him down for the sack. Second of the game for Cramdy. Well, Willie Jefferson was like a windmill coming off the edge, and that's why Dola Gala had to duck. I mean, he, he, he watched Jefferson coming off the edge here like a 
just a wild windmill, arms flailing around, and he just flushes Dolagal up into the pocket, and Cramney's there to get the stat. Jefferson still causing issues for quarterbacks around the league on a rather regular basis coming into this game. Eight sacks and 11 knockdowns for Willie. Forsak keeps this away. Parker back on it. No Janari Grant just yet for Winnipeg. It's Parker brings this up along the far sideline. Nowhere else to go. Nowhere else to go against this Bombers defense today. Had one of these this year. Well, apparently C.J. Rivas had an issue in warm-up with one of his fingers, and Brett Lowther was in there to try and <laughs> help his teammate and absolutely could not watch <laughs> as they were popping it back in place. And C.J. Rivas said, yep, good, I'm good to go. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there and chill and do my thing. And pretty Brett Lowther's over there going, yeah, not, not so much. <laughs> not so much. Couldn't watch. Had a few of those probably today, I would think. <laughs> well, apparently it started early in the morning outside. Back to Brady Oliveira. Look yes. at him go. Look Brady nice. Oliveira does it again all the way up to midfield. Running all over the riders all day. Wow, this is just Brady Oliveira really padding in stats now. And, you know, the only question mark I have now for the Bombers from their perspective is a couple of interesting efforts on the tackle attempts down the field. But the only question is Zach Kolaris still on. Yes, yeah, still in this game, 45 to 6 late in the third quarter. It's just a. Uh, Risky. I'd just say it's risky. Well, Latarski, first time today. He's got a catch, takes it down inside the 35. You know, if, if it's if it's Jake Dolagala at in this kind of game, I get I get it. Keep him in here, get him the reps. He, yeah. he needs the reps. I mean, you, you know, you're you're in your fourth start, you're still working with the receiving core and the number ones. It's only been a month that he's been working really consistently with the number one group. So the timing and understanding their body language and all of that's important, but not this guy. Yeah, if he throws a pass and his thumb hits a helmet or something. Yeah, and I, you know, I've been in this, it's funny, all the years of, of covering this league, and, and Mark Tressman used to do this as well. He would leave Anthony Calvillo in. Yeah. After, a, or throughout a blowout, you know, it could be 30 point lead in the fourth and Anthony Calvillo would be in, and I'm certainly not, you know, criticizing the coach's decision here. I'm just, I, I always would lean on the safety of Zach Kolaris and the risk that's involved. Just over a minute remaining here in the third quarter. Deontay Williams has been taken out by the spotter. We'll be back in just a moment. Elks and Stampeders. Real good chance that'll be a tight one. I call well than ever. Yeah. That's a that's a big game again for both teams. First and ten from the rider 32 for Kolaris. They'll give it to Brady Oliveira and Oliveira pushing ahead. Oh boy, that run ended in a hurry. CJ Rivas was there. Oliveira with the best rushing game of the season, highest rushing total of the year in the Canadian Football League today. This will put him over 150. C.J. Rebus with a dislocated thumb and a thud here. That's an example of when you look at the scoreboard at the bottom of your screen, a player still giving it all he's got in Rebus. 152 yards for Oliveira is a new career high. Tack on a few more here. Over 200 of offense for Oliveira. Yeah, 57 yards on four catches in the air. And then now just shy of 160. 
Said on the ground to other games but I, I really believe that you know, not just because of his big numbers tonight but I, I, I really believe Buck Pierce offense starts with him I mean he he's the tone setter for this team it's also that they go to late in games to seal things away as well right so a couple of different ways that they really utilize him and it is tough to just look at one aspect of this Winnipeg offense it's averaging almost 32 points per game but I think a lot of people will probably agree with you. Ruka, first down. And that is how the third quarter comes to a close. All Bombers here at home in the Banjo Bowl. Party has been on early and often at IG Field. 45-6. Winnipeg on top through three. The books at IG Field, Winnipeg on top, 45 to six, dominating every aspect of this football game. Yeah, a lot of big numbers on the right side, a lot of smaller numbers on the left side, and the scoreboard really tells the story, and the stats back it up. Zach Kolaris, excellent, but Brady Oliveira, just a monster early in this game, and now they've gone back around to him here late in the third quarter. In the first quarter, we put up a board that said, the question was, are the Bombers still the number one team? in the league and showed you the stats that would indicate that they are and with all due respect to the Argos who I think are maybe one well, they're right there too yeah right there too you know I I you know I think about games like this one for sure but also when Zach Kolaris throws two pick sixes and the Bombers still win by 20 or excuse me 30, 30 that was 30, 30 yeah. that game and you know that just never happens. I mean, you you throw two pick sixes in a game, you, you're not winning that game most of the time. But this team did. Toronto will be here later in the month. Moncrief takes down Dembski on the near sideline. It's a tough one for a guy like Micah Johnson on defense, who, you know, again I. About this time of year, I start to look at the players that I keep seeing in replays. I keep seeing making plays and doing their jobs very well, and but aren't being talked about. That's why we talked about Evan Holm on the other side. But I think Micah Johnson's having an all-star season. I mean, four sacks, you know, often you have to get up to around seven or eight by this time as an interior guy to be talked about as a perennial all-star, an all-star. But I think he's having an all-star season and doing his job. These are tough ones for him, the veterans. Second and seven. Back to the ground here. Oliveira wrapped up that time. Third down. Well, let me show you what Micah has to deal with. And, and true interior defensive tackles have to deal with almost every play. Two big boys, Newfelt and Hardrick, in the double team. And he's got to plug that gap. That's 50 plays a game. That's a long day, That's, isn't that's it? what you're doing, 50 plays a game. Long day at the office right there. One of the captains that had a great discussion with Pete Robertson after last week's game and one of the leaders on that team. Castillo tosses three more. 48 to six Winnipeg. Chris Strebler in the house. His prize for being here. An interview with John Lou when we return. The tailgate segment before the game. What's it been like for you being back here in Peg City? It's been unbelievable. I knew it was going to be exciting, and I knew the fans were going to show love, and it's surpassed my wildest expectations. So, you know, this is like a second home to me, and I just appreciate what the organization did for me, giving me an opportunity, and it's where I started my career. It's special to me. Uh, did, how much did you connect with the guys that were your teammates, especially part of the uh, 2019 Grey Cup team? I saw some of the guys yesterday just kind of popping in and out, but uh, I'm going to be meeting up with a lot of them tonight after the game. So I know they they were focused, you know, leading up to the game, obviously a big game, and so didn't want to bother them too much, but I'll be reconnecting with a lot of them tonight. What do you think of this Banjo Bowl? I mean, you experienced it firsthand, but I mean, crooked score, honoring James Murphy, one of the greats in Bombers yeah. history. I got to meet James, great guy, obviously a legend, 48 to 6. That says what it needs to say, and the energy in here is just electric. So 
it's been an amazing day, and uh, I'm really glad I got to come back for it. Very quickly, uh, final one, Chris. Uh, what does your immediate football future hold for you? Yeah, well, I just got healthy. I got injured in the preseason, and so I just gave my agent the green light to start reaching out to NFL teams. And so, you know, there's been some little nibbles, and we'll see where it goes. But um, I'm just really looking forward to whatever the next opportunity is down there and uh, going to be ready to take advantage of it when that call comes. Yeah, well, best of luck with that. Thanks for spending time with us, Chris. Yeah. Thank you very much. Chris Trevler. Yeah, just a, what a what a great role he took on in that 2019 season and championship season for the Bombers. Great parade there. That was great vids there. He said that jacket was his ex-girlfriend's mother's <laughs> and he doesn't have it anymore. Third and short trying to push ahead. That extra effort may have been enough. I think it is. And the riders will try to keep this offense on the field they do get the first down what a great preseason too that Strebler had when he went down south and reminded me of uh, another pretty good preseason of a uh, kid playing last year in the Canadian Football League that went down south well we've seen him in BC earlier in the season with his family checking in out in Nathan Ryan yes. yeah well, Gala in trouble Willie Jefferson can't take him down he actually dumps it off to his running back for a short pickup with Willie Jefferson literally hanging off his back you know, this this game is is done but you know I think Jake Dolagala is a guy that the riders can continue to build around and continue to believe in I don't think you read into too much today from Dola Gala and no. all of a sudden panic. First road start this one incomplete and in one of the most difficult situations in the entire league for Dola Gala. Still has looked after the football today, but Winnipeg's defense is just on another level here this afternoon. Yeah, we had a chance to talk to him back to back weeks too and, and just have a great conversation about the game and his approach to it and and very level headed guy. I, I think they can really build around him. And no, tonight was not his fault at all. Not the offense's fault as all at all. The rider defense could not stop this bomber offense tonight. Period. And Ola Gal has completed actually 75% of his passes now for limited yardage. But Winnipeg has done whatever they want offensively. Yeah, that, that's really, uh, that's the best way to say it. Whether they ran the ball or didn't, they got what they wanted. They got what they wanted. They did whatever they wanted. Kolaris watching as Brown heads out onto the field. For Drew Brown into the football game with just over 10 minutes left. We've seen a little bit of Drew Brown. He's looked good this year when he's got that ball. Absolutely. Third year with the, with the Bombers out of Oklahoma State. Captain with that team, leader in that, that team, of course, in that position. Takes off on the run here, out to his right to the 30. And he'll go for a slide, keep it in bounds. So, so let's see the final numbers for starting quarterback QB1 Zach Kolaris, who, as you mentioned, Dustin, pretty much did whatever he wanted to do offensively tonight. 18 of 21, 319. And let's be honest, in the two series that he was in in the third quarter, they were kind of running the ball and just winding this one down. Probably should have touched down the Lawler, though. He dropped one, and that would have been his career high six touchdown passes. We talked about last year, Banjo Bowl. First eight possessions of the game, Winnipeg scored points. This year's Banjo Bowl, first eight possessions of the game, Winnipeg scored points. Six touchdowns. Five touchdown throws tonight. For Kolaris, that one just creating some magic from the backfield while being pulled down. That's a Kenny Lawler got down to the end zone. Three to Dalton Schoen on three straight completions to Schoen. A 27 touchdown passes on the season for the back-to-back -back MOP certainly has himself. In that discussion again oh, this oh yeah. year. Oh yeah. Today yeah. didn't hurt hurt his case, that's for sure. Brown 
Wolitarski cuts it back at midfield, and Drew Brown comes in and picks up right where Zach left off. Well, yeah, you know, and I, I think it's interesting that there's been, there's been some that have tried to take him out of the conversation because of some recent interceptions of late. But, you know, I mentioned those two pick sixes against Montreal and still won by 30 points. So, you know, I, he is definitely a front runner in that regard. Chad Kelly, I think, is in the discussion for sure. There are others, and it was a great conversation this, this week with Zach you know about the Pete Robertson thing he was real happy that they talked and they're all good and I'm not bringing that back up to you know unearth the whole discussion again just to say at some point maybe in the offseason maybe at another date there's a bigger picture discussion that probably should go on and I'd love to have a guy like Zach Kolaris just a, a well-respected guy who's played in that quarterback position who has taken a bunch of those type of things a bunch of those little hits the I don't mean little to to minimize it I'm just talking about the after the whistle stuff the late stuff things like that it just seems like he's been a victim of a bunch of them and it'll, it'll be a good big picture discussion in the offseason to eliminate it to get it out of there Couple of yards needed here. Pushed right ahead, and look at this burst. Johnny Augustine all the way down to the 10, and he picks up where Brady Oliveira left off. Bombers offensive backups getting the job done. Well, it doesn't change the guys up front. They're still getting their job done, and when you get holes like that where you're not getting touched by anyone till you get into the into the secondary and then it's all the the DBs that had a shot miss too so it's a pursuit of a defensive lineman and it's Charbel De Beer I believe who tracks him down it was De Beer great hustle from De Beer to get back there well that'll be a plus for him yeah. I mean you watch the video there's a guy who didn't quit Brown this is Augustine there had AJ Allen in his face as he tried to connect with his running back. You know, and in blowouts like this, and one of the reasons that I bring up to you know, Coach O'Shea making the decision and when he's going to bring the backup out is is not just to protect this, you know, the the health of the starter, the QB one, but it's also it allows your backup to keep the pedal to the metal, <laughs> you know, because he, I, I'm just telling you, they want to keep putting points on the board and make as big a statement as they possibly can. And when you're kind of rubbing it in, that's when people start saying, you know, you were running up the score and all of those things. The backups have to play hard. They're trying to Brown to the corner, incomplete. Kenny Lawler working there against Amari Henderson. He looks like he's getting up a little bit slow. Maybe be his last game action went down on his back there. But that way you say as a coach, you go, hey, we put our backups in and mix in everybody. Yeah, and they and they just they have to keep playing, keep playing hard. And by the way, as a defender against in a blowout like this, where you're on the wrong end of it, don't give us pity. Just keep playing hard. I've told the story before, but we were playing against Montreal one year, and Mike Pringle went all the way down the field, and on the one-yard line, they kneeled three times. One of my worst moments in football. Embarrassing. Ah. Oh! <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Ah! Come on down to Winnipeg. Ah! Got the Jays on with the. <laughs> Did you see how serious Zach Kolaris's bobblehead was <laughs> next to Willie Jefferson's bobblehead? <laughs> well, this is a great idea. It's life-size bobbleheads to get some fan interaction in the stadium. They'll be around the stadium. On the concourse, you get, you're, you're on the here, concourse yeah. you get pictures with them. And they've got them in the NFL. They got them in Major League Baseball, and fans love it. What a great idea! Adam Big Hill has one. 
Jay Patterson in the game now for Sketch and getting some reps, but Zach Kolaris has one as well. Oh, he got the ball and everything. And look, he's so serious, <laughs> even with the head bombing a little bit. But a cool, I mean, a cool concept though here for fans to come and have an opportunity to take a couple of pictures. Exactly, with our phones, everything is about the phone and the picture and getting the shot and the selfie and all of those things. Now you can get it with bobblehead Willie Jefferson. <laughs> Love it. Patterson, just over four minutes left, gets into this game, working from his own 50. Go with Gallo, get the rest of the night off. Patterson on the run, out to his right, has a completion to his running back. And he is close to a first down. Here is uh, Zach Kolaris on his bobblehead. I didn't see it until, uh, I guess, at the end of practice, and somebody walked up to me and said, you can bring that home with you? I'm like, what are you talking about? There's a, you know, 50 yards across the field is a bobblehead. I said, no, man, I can, what are we going to do with it? We have enough stuff as it is. Um, but it was cool. My, uh, my parents got into town, um, and they were able to see it with, uh, with my kids, so that was cool. My kids, my kids were pumped. <laughs> yeah, they pressing the head and the head doing that. So they thought it was funny. The Capri was a little afraid, but Sierra thought it was cool. <laughs> Big carry up the middle once again for Thomas Bertrand. <laughs> <Good on. laughs> I love that way he was asked, are you, are you gonna take it home? Could you yeah. imagine? Well, could you imagine walking into your house and your and your family going? What are you doing? Oh, I'm bringing a bobblehead life yeah. size of me to put in the front yard. <laughs> Come on. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> uh, I think John Lou's text to us. He said a couple of the guys did ask if they could take him home, but the team said when you retire a bomber, yeah, you can have it. So you could take it then. Confirm Willie Jefferson's never leaving. Because <laughs> he's gonna want to get a hold of that bobblehead when his career's over. Patterson, tough to get a hold of him. A flag here as he turns it up field. This one's going to be a hold. And that'll take us inside three minutes of our middle game on Super Saturday triple header. Next time you're at IG Field. Ford running for 135 yards. What does he have in store tonight? Jake Mayer, though, led his team back 22 points in the fourth. Battle of Alberta coming up next. That'll be a yeah. really good football game. We we did that one on, on Monday. It was a phenomenal game. Great finish by Calgary and Trey Ford was spectacular in the early going of that one. Trey Ford put a show on you know in the losing effort but uh, just a great show of athleticism. I mean and he is he is a great pure passer. I mean you you can see him throwing on the run. He, he's I've seen him against Hamilton and other teams in these in this sort of month long run for Trey Ford. Be able to pick up blitzes, find the hot routes, go through progressions, things like that. But athletically, a special talent. First team to get a second look at him this year are the Calgary Stampeders. How much do you think four days will help you prepare after you just played him? Yeah, it's it's going to be that much tougher, and there's got to be sort of a progression in the chess match for the Elks as yeah. well. So. You know one thing, Calgary is going to try and keep him in the pocket. They're going to try and make him throw from deep in the pocket as much as they can. But he can make you miss. You can, it's tough to keep him in the pocket. Yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can load the line of scrimmage against Trey Ford and not keep him in there. So, you know, they, but they will have to progress. You know, get those hot routes. You got one-on-ones. One guy misses a tackle in the secondary with the throw. You've got all those guys committed to stopping him from running. That's how you beat it. So... The interesting matchup and and the stamps have a great opportunity here to really get in the race. Yeah. Well and Lofter trying to sneak that one in. He will not. Misses it wide left. And Parker will bring it out on the far side of the field. Jamal Parker to the 15. And no further. I say that because Jake Mayer, I think, put together that comeback win in a time where they really needed to do that. I mean the, the Stamps have been in so many close games and just not finished them and not found a way to, to get the W. And that last on Monday, they did that. They finished it. They came from behind to do it. And that can be a game changer for them. It can turn their season. They, now they need to stack them. And stack them means winning right after us tonight.
Saskatchewan will fall to six and six. Winnipeg will go to ten and three here today. Edmonton had won a couple in a row. That loss to Calgary really hurt them in the because they would have been ahead of Calgary if they won the game. They pretty much have to have this one today if there's any sort of dreams of a possible crossover down the stretch for Edmonton. Yeah, and, Ca and Calgary with a win, you know, they're right in the fight for the third spot in the West and and certainly solidifies any if they can't get it and, they, and Saskatchewan beats them out down the stretch for the third spot in the division, then they they are looking at the crossover. So Hamilton with a big win last night, very important in fighting off the crossover. Next up for the uh, Riders will be Edmonton next week. So we'll see how that one plays out, depending on what happens next. And third game of our triple header here, Saturday action on TSN. And the Bombers have clinched a playoff spot with this win. Augustine takes it out to the 25. So Winnipeg clinching Toronto has already clinched as well, so things starting to sort of come into focus as we work our way through the final couple of months of the regular season, but it's gonna be a very intriguing battle the rest of the way for everybody else. BC's had a few missteps along the way here as well, and try to get their game back on track. Right, well, I'm, I'm already looking to, what is it, three, four weeks down the road when the Bombers go to BC Place and take on the Lions, depending yeah. on where we are in the standings. You could see that as a battle for first in the division. Well, and that'll be a week after Toronto is here. So Winnipeg goes Toronto, BC, back to back, late September, early October, which should be two excellent football games. It's the only time Winnipeg and Toronto meet all season. And there will be a lot of eyes on that game. And like we mentioned, the riders here, Jake Tolagala, will be heading home to face Edmonton next week. Yeah, another intriguing storyline for that Toronto game here will be the return of Andrew Harris. The mentor for a guy with over 200 yards of saying, offense tonight. Whatever he taught Brady <laughs> Oliveira, it worked it very well. <laughs> it worked very well. Brady Oliveira tonight, 154 yards on 18 carries. Had a receiving touchdown on four catches. Caught all four balls that were thrown his way for 57 yards. Zach was great tonight. Ray Oliveira, maybe even better. He was outstanding as well. And in his spare time, rescues puppies. So just a, just one of those really nice guys. Eh? Superhero. He is, is, well, as far as my wife's concerned, he's a superhero. Yeah, she loves Brady, doesn't she? Well, when I told to, when I, I told her that she, he saves puppies in the off season and saved hundreds of puppies from freezing to death in Manitoba, instant favorite player. And look at this, Jamison Sheen is actually dressed today. This is the first time he's had to punt the ball all day. I've seen, him, I've seen him on the sideline. No shower necessary. Just waiting, yeah. <laughs> you put on your street clothes and go home. <laughs> yeah. First punt of the game for Winnipeg comes with 30 seconds left on the clock. <laughs> we'll kick it away from Mario Alford. Well, here's... <laughs> We talked to, to Michael O'Shea, and he actually, for this game, wanted to shore up a little bit his cover teams, and, and he brought Malik Clements on yeah. as another linebacker on cover teams. So there's two ways to do that, like add some more linebacker DB types, or just not punt. Don't punt, don't punt. <laughs> don't punt, stay away from it. Mario Alford doesn't get to return this one. He didn't return a punt. <laughs> just don't. All day. If you're, if you're the riders here, yeah. you just forget about this one, just watch this one. You just no. beat the Lions, and, and, they, and you beat this team, so. No, listen, you got to watch it. You, I, I, you know, I thought that. And in the old days, we kind of did that. But I, I think you've got to learn from everything you do, good or bad. And the, and the riders will do that. They'll, they'll go back to the drawing board. It's been a lot of good the last couple of weeks. And back to the, the riders and back to the video, you know, just go and watch it Go see what happened. Why were the gaps so big and why did Brady Oliveira have the day he had because 
at some point if the riders want to get where they want to be the top dog on the porch they're gonna have to beat this team in the division somebody will try to beat this team in the division has not happened for the last three years in the postseason and it certainly was not even remotely close to happening today as the Bombers lock up a spot. Zach Kolaris near perfect. And all in all, Winnipeg dominates from start to finish. Yeah, toughest game of the regular season for the Riders every single year. And this year was no exception. Labor Day may have been a classic.